Japan was included in this secret group. In the last meeting, there were 96 uh, delegates from the U.S. and Canada, 157 from Europe, uh, European Union or Western Europe, and 75 from Japan. Now, the object of these three secret organizations, there's only one object, and that is to form a one-world government. When Bill, uh, when uh, George Herbert Walker Bush was president, he stated in several of his speeches the term New World Order. Uh, anyone that uh, really knows what they're doing will never, in, within the elite, never use the term New World Order again. Because when they do, the audience eyes open up, they sit on the edge of their seat and, and become very attentive. They have substituted a, a, a new generic term and they call it global. Anytime they use the term global union, global architecture, global economy, global market, that exactly equals New World Order. So don't let them fool you. Now let's talk about uh, some of the members of the elite. And in my book I list all of the members from about 1992 to the year 2000 of all three secret organizations. Uh, in this book I also list every member of the Bilderbergs from the day where they were founded in 1954. So let's just take the, the current list and, and let's start with just the key uh, groups within our federal government. Executive Office of the President. Uh, William Jefferson Clinton was a member of the Bilderbergs Council of Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. His wife Hillary attended the Bilderberg meeting when they met in Georgia on an island north of Atlanta. Uh, she, her name did not appear as on the official list of attendees, but uh, there was a member, a patriot member there with a steel camera with a photo lens and he took a picture of Hillary getting out of a limousine as she entered the building where the Bilderberg meetings were held. Now, why do I say that that they don't always list everybody as attendees. Uh, one of my major sources of information on the Bilderbergs is my partner in Germany. Uh, he's fixing to publish who's who of the elite in the German language. And uh, when Dr. Joseph Rittinger died, all of his private papers went into the archives in Frankfurt, Germany. My partner just happens to live in Frankfurt He's a very brilliant young man. Uh, he just somehow, I, I, well, I don't say somehow, God guided him in there. He went into the archives. The clerk on duty spoke on a German, could not read English. All of the Bilderberg papers are in English. And he asked to see the documents that had the name Bilderberg on them. And so the clerk brought, brought him a whole pile of documents. He looked through them and he could see he struck a gold mine and so he asked the clerk, he's, he's a German citizen, so he asked, and he asked her in German if he could copy these documents. And that person said, I don't know why not, go ahead. And <laughs> so he copied these documents and sent them to me. Now, Stan mentioned earlier that uh, people that like myself, when they need something, all of a sudden it just appears. Uh, that's happened throughout my research. Uh, I'll give you a glowing example. I was walking down the uh, aisle of the uh, stacks in the library at Southwest Texas University and, and all of a sudden something compelled me to stop. And I stopped and turned to the right. And on the bookshelf right at eye level was a book simply titled David. I reached up and told and pull that book off the shelf, looked at the looked for a table of contents, there was none. I looked for an index, there was none. So I just opened up roughly in the center of the book and on the left hand page, about the center of the page, I saw the name David Rockefeller and shortly after that the term Bilderberg. That was my first exposure to the Bilderbergs. Now chance would not make me do that. People just don't do that. Uh, often people will just send me 
information and they don't even know I need it or want it. But when it arrives, that's just about the time that I need it. Uh, and when it happens, I just say, thank you, uh, you're on time. And, uh, but I'm very grateful that I have been selected to do this. I'm purely a scribe. I'm, I'm just the, uh, the Paul Revere of today, trying to get the word out. And often people say, if you talk about these secret organizations and, and people involved in, in all of this bad stuff, aren't you afraid they're gonna kill you? And my answer is, I, I, I never give it a second thought, and there is only one answer, and that is, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That is the only answer. I never look over my shoulder, and I never lose one minute's sleep, and uh, they know I'm out here. Uh, now, perhaps it's uh, something Mahatma Gandhi said uh, a number of years back. He made a statement that says, first, they ignore you. Second, they try to ridicule you. Third, they try to stop you. And fourth, you win. I guess I'm in the first phase. They, they're ignoring me right now. Uh, but of the recent presidents since Eisenhower, uh, they've all been members of the secret groups except John F. K., John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Ronald Reagan, and George W. Bush. However, George W. Bush was a member of the Skull and Bone Society at Yale University. Now, every director of the Central Intelligence Agency has been a member of these secret groups. In fact, John Deutsch was a member of all three groups. Uh, and every Secretary of Defense has been a member. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, our present Secretary of Defense, attended uh, at least two Bilderberg meetings, and that's in my book. But you can see uh, uh, Robert Strange McNamara was a member of all three secret groups, and the Vietnam War was called McNamara's War. And uh, in his book and several times on television in public appearances, he has stated that in all honesty, he could have and should have stopped the Vietnam War four or five years before it did, but he didn't have the power or, or the, the courage or whatever it was to confront the insiders. He didn't name, he didn't say insiders, but he said, I couldn't confront them and, and say that we needed to stop it. But he was really talking about the, the international bankers who make money off of wars uh, they financed both sides of wars. They made lots of money off the Vietnam War and did not want it to stop. They didn't, they didn't care one hoot whether people were killed or maimed or uh, all the horrible things that happened to them there. They were in their ivory towers counting the money and that's all they cared about. Now the State Department, they absolutely control the State Department because that's where foreign policy is made. Uh, General Colin Luther Powell is a member of Bill of Berg's and Council of Foreign Relations. Now, when you go in the book to the listing where I list everybody that's ever attended a Bilderberg meeting, the only person that has attended every Bilderberg meeting is a fellow named David Rockefeller. The person that has attended the most meetings after David is a fellow named Henry Kissinger. He's uh, Dave Rockefeller's left-hand man, and uh, Henry is a member of all three secret groups. Uh, he really controls the, the uh, uh, commerce in China. If you want to do business in China, you must go through Kissinger and Associates. So uh, you've got some really evil people involved in the inner circle of these secret groups. And they go back all the way to uh, probably Woodrow Wilson. They like to control the Treasury Department. Uh, there's only the, the current uh, person, Paul H. O'Neill, that's uh, tre Secretary of the Treasury, is not a member of the secret group, but within a year, he will be a member. That's just the way it works. Uh, United Nations, every UN ambassador except two in recent years have been members of these secret groups. 
This is more within the United Nations. Back to their point of foundation, they've, they've been controlled. They also control the House of Representatives and our government. Thomas uh, S. Foley was a member of all three secret groups. He was uh, Speaker of the House. The one that took his place was Newt Gingrich. Uh, one day, a uh, TV reporter on camera asked Newt if he was a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. And sort of caught him off guard. He said, oh, well, y yes, I am. Uh, you know, back at, in one, at one time, that was probably a very dangerous group, but today it's just a place where cottage professors go to read their newspapers and smoke their cigars and, and have meaningful discussions with their friends. Now, if he'd have said anything different from that or more than that, he would have been kicked out of the Council of Foreign Relations because of that bylaw. Uh, you see Lee Hamilton has been a member of all three secret groups. Lee is a very docile appearing person, but he cannot be docile if he is a member of these secret, all three groups. And that's more in the uh, House of Representatives. They also control the U.S. Senate. Uh, Hillary Rodham, Rodham Clinton, the new senator from New York, I told you earlier she attended Bilderberg meeting in Georgia. Uh, John Chaffee is another fairly docile appearing person, member of all three secret groups. Daniel Patrick Monaghan, he, he seems to be a very nice fella, but uh, he's a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. So. Now, I wouldn't have thought that we've talked about the executive and uh, ex uh, legislative groups. I didn't think they would control the judicial, but there are three sitting associate justices of the Supreme Court that are members of the Council of Foreign Relations. Now the last time there was a vacancy on the Supreme Court, the news media uh, published a short list of the five people that were considered to be the next setting justice. Every one of those five were members of the Council of Foreign Relations. There was no outsider at all included. Now. In uh, President George W. Bush's term of office, because of age, at least two sitting justices will retire. That'll give him an opportunity to put two more people on the Supreme Court. And if you look at history, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that the next two sitting justices will be members of the Council of Foreign Relations. That'll give them absolute control of the Supreme Court. Now, why would they want to control the Supreme Court? Now, let's say that if I were lucky enough to file a suit against the, an organization and the Bilderbergs or Council on Foreign Relations Trilateral Commission were involved and it finally got up to the Supreme Court, guess which they, way they would lean? Do you have any doubt? Now, they could not do what they want to do unless they absolutely control the news media. Uh, I have pages and pages of people in newspapers and news magazines, but the people that are known by almost everyone are those on television. So let's just look at those, primarily the anchors, uh, David Brinkley's member, Peter Jennings, Diane Sawyer. Now, Diane Sawyer is not only a member of the Council of Relations, but she's a member of their board of directors. Uh, Gary Cutley, Barbara Wawa Walters, uh, George Will. Leslie Stahl and Ed Bradley of 60 Minutes, uh, Marvin Cab, Dan Rather, Roland Evans, Jesse Lewis Jackson, uh, Bernard Cab, Frank Sesno, Carl T. Rowan, Tom Brokaw, John Chancellor, Elizabeth Drew, Irving R. Levine, uh, and Jim Lair. And Bill Moyers is not only a member of the Bilderbergs, but is a member of the CIA. And when uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson was sworn into office on Air Force One. That plane was held on the ground for over an hour waiting for Bill Moyers to come get on that plane to fly back to Washington. They wouldn't do that for just the average reporter, I assure you. Uh, they also, for some reason, have a need to get involved in charities and racial groups and religion. And uh, the f late Joseph Cardinal Bernadine of Chicago was a member. Uh, Elaine Chow, President of the United Way, is a member. 
Benjamin Hooks, the executive director of the